We're now getting to the heart of the matter. Seabor concise binary object representation is a more compact serialization format than JSON. It has a strong impact in the Internet of Things, and if we understand well how structures are managed, we can optimize representation. That's why we look at it in detail. If binary makes you uncomfortable, you might suffer a bit. Seabor is standardized by the IATF under RFC 8949. Seabor will keep the data structures defined by JSON, but will encode them differently. IoT is allergic to messages that are too long, and JSON encoding isn't totally efficient, particularly for numbers. Here we have a JSON object structure representative of what a sensor could emit. The object contains an identifier, a sequence number, and an array of measurements. If we count all the characters, it takes 101 characters to represent it. Where we can gain the most is with numbers. They are represented by characters. For example, the first number on 64 bits or 8 bytes but it takes 19 characters in text. Same for the second number, which can fit on a single byte instead of three. There's also the JSON syntax that introduces double braces, double quotes, double brackets, and commas. And finally, characters useless for the computer, but that favor reading with spaces and line breaks. Without spoiling what's next, this same structure in CBOR will only take 42 bytes so a reduction of more than half. How is such a miracle possible? Seabor takes the elements defined by JSON, but will classify them differently. Seabor defines eight major types. They will be represented by a, a three-bit value. Numbers are divided into three categories, positive integers, negative integers, and floating point numbers. Structures deriving from these three major types will start respectively with binary values 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1, 1. The last structure will also serve to encode well-known values like true, false, and null. We'll see later how to encode the content. Seabor also makes the difference between byte arrays, well-known in Python, and character strings, but the encoding principle will be the same. The major types are 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, 1, 1, 3. Then C. Bohr will define two composite structures, array and maps that will encode JSON objects, with major types 1, 0, 0, 4, and 1, 0, 1, 5. Finally, C. Bohr introduces a new tag element with major 1, 1, 0, 6 allowing to indicate more precisely what certain elements represent. Now, let's look in more detail at how positive integers are encoded. The major type 000 occupies the first three bits of the byte starting the structure, so there are five bits left unassigned. What Seabor will do is use these five bits to encode values from 1 to 23. So we put the binary value directly there. For numbers larger than 23, we'll use the five bits to encode the value of the number. 24 will indicate that the following byte contains a number. So we can go up to 255. After that, it takes two bytes to encode values to encode value. So we put 25 after the major and the following two, bytes encode values up to 65,535, and so on. If we put 26, the following four bytes encode the values, and if we put 27, the following eight bytes encode the number. This is therefore a very interesting property of CBOR. For small numbers up to 24, there is no overhead, and the size of the number representation increases with their values. For negative numbers, it's the same principle, but to avoid encoding 0 twice, they are shifted by 1. The binary value 00100000 encodes minus 1. Byte strings and character strings will use a similar approach. 
The major type is 0, 1, 0, and 0, 1, 1. The following bits are used to directly encode the string length up to 23 characters. If the size is larger, we'll use a code that will indicate the size of the field that will encode the length. For 89 characters, we need one byte to indicate the size, so the value after the major will be 24. If the size encoding must be done on two bytes, we indicate 25 after the major. Arrays follow the same principle. As each array element is encoded in CBOR, the element indicates its own length. The array just needs to know the number of elements. If the array has less than 23 elements, we encode the number of elements directly after the major. Otherwise, we add a length field whose size is indicated after the major. For maps, we'll follow the same principle, but the number of elements concerns the key value pairs that will be two consecutive elements in the CBOR representation. Note that CBOR can be less restrictive than JSON, and a key can be any key BOR element, not just a character string. So you have to choose. Either stay compatible with JSON representation and only use keys composed of character string elements or go beyond JSON representation to allow other major types like integers and floats. CBOR no longer requires key uniqueness either. In this case, we can no longer convert CBOR to JSON and applications must process CBOR directly. The last major type for data is for floating point numbers, that is, decimal numbers and predefined values. Floats are encoded according to IEEE 754 representation. This capture from a website shows how multiples of 10 are encoded in single and double precision. We see that the value is still not exact, but obviously the larger the float size, the better its precision. This is an important point in encoding a float with C bore. Therefore, this type should be avoided as much as possible if we want compact representations. For example, by using an integer type and multiplying it by a power of 10. To represent 3.14, it's shorter to encode 314 and ask receivers to divide it by 100 we lose an interoperability because the other end must know this trick, but we gain in performance. Tags remain, which have different behavior. They don't encode a base type, but allow adding information to facilitate data processing. For example, here we have three character strings. You recognize a URI, basis 60, for encoding, and a date. This is in JSON we can easily convert a character string to CBOR. We have the type and length and below the value in hexa. To make it more readable, after the hashtags, we have comment. To indicate that we have a date, the RFC tells us to use tag one. Similarly, for base 64 encoding, we must use tag 34. Same trick as the tag value is greater than 23. We encode it in the following byte. Same for URI with code 32. We can even do more fun things. For example, we can transmit a fraction, let's say 34 over 867. We put the two values in an array, which gives the following keyboard sequence, and we proceeded with tag 4. We see here that CBOR is more complete than JSON. Since tagged CBOR data contains more information than JSON can represent, it's stupid to go back through this format. The tag therefore allows directly linking the function that will produce or process the CBOR data. You'll see this later with the date structure, which is directly taken into account in the Python examples.